Riley, you seem kind of quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if we can get you to talk a little bit. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, another edition as we come out of the bye week. I'm Adam Hildebrandt alongside Tiger Football Head Coach Josh Blankenship. Uh, Coach, you had a a rare Friday off, uh, and actually you have three straight Friday nights off, which is a a little strange, but what what did you do with with the little spare time over the weekend? Did you get to just... You do some yard work, some honeydews. Yep. What what what'd you do? A lot of those. It's amazing how fast those uh, pile up, <laughs> and how eager she was to give that list to me. Uh, so got after that. Got to hang out with the family over the weekend. Uh, Friday night went up and watched Southmore play Edmond Memorial. Uh, just kind of get some fresh eyes on it. You know, film's great, but seeing it live is, is very useful too. Do you get to as as a football coach? Do you get to watch football simply for the enjoyment of it over a weekend, or are you constantly in like coach mode? What do I learn from this kind of deal? I would say the last two seasons, um, I've watched virtually zero football until mm. <clears throat> until our season was over. Uh, that's not really by choice. I'm just so kind of locked in on what we're doing. And then when I do get home, I really try to spend that time with you know Lindsay and the kids. You have uh, you had a bye week this last week. Then it's a Thursday game this week, and then another Thursday game next week. Yeah. How let's 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 pretend those games were on Fridays to begin with. Mm-hmm. Just the bye week itself. How do you structure your bye week differently because you don't have a game at the end of it? Uh, we'll see if I stick with this routine, but but I'm really a big believer in focusing on us uh, more than trying to prep for the next opponent. Um, so we we really looked at it as almost like a. a a week of fall camp that we didn't have, you know, when you have that zero week, you really speed up your, uh, your, your, your time, um, as far as getting ready for that first game. And you, you don't have that one week that you used to have, uh, back in the day before they allowed the zero week. So we really try to go back and, uh, uh, really get back to development fundamentals. Um, you still want to keep the speed of the game as close to Friday nights or Thursday nights as possible. (laughs) So, we did, we did get some good on good, um, you know, almost scrimmage format, uh, not quite all the way to the ground, um, and not for too long of a time. We, we don't want to bang them up and beat them up just because it's a bye week um, sure. at the same time. Speed of the game is so important. Yeah, how do, you, how do you find that balance between, you know, wanting to get guys healthy and get them rest, yeah. but also wanting to, them to stay competitive and competing with each other? Well, the, I think just not doing too much of it. Um, I think doing enough uh, so that you're still improving, but, but not just beating them into the ground. Uh, so Monday was more of the bye week was more of a kind of a walk through teach uh, kind of refresher uh, day much like a Sunday is when the kids come up on a normal week. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, were the padded you know good on good competitive practices, um, but we still kept that to like an hour twenty, uh, so it wasn't a you know your typical two hour two and a half hour fall fall camp practice. Uh, Thursday we uh, went out to jack of all games and uh, just played. Uh, you know, some team team bonding stuff sounds kind of corny, but that stuff really is important. And then Friday, we switched gears and started focusing on uh, Southmore. And so Friday was was what a typical Monday practice would be on a Friday game week schedule. Um, and then transitioned, uh, gave the kids off uh, Saturday and Sunday, told them to watch some football. Um, and then Monday was a Tuesday practice. Wednesday was a typical uh, Thursday practice, so on and so forth. So forth. So it's it's just a condensed uh, schedule, but we still try to keep it as routine as we can for the kids. And I was about to say, uh, the nice thing about having a, a quote unquote week of fall camp in September is it's not as hot, but that's not accurate. It was still like 98 degrees. All last, la- week. last week was okay. I mean, it was still warm, but, uh, Monday and Tuesday this week, it was like, I keep calling it Oklahoma's last uppercut on mm-hmm. the weather. I mean, it, it was brutal, but it was, it was powered a, through a dirty, rotten trick two Saturdays <laughs> yeah. ago when we had that cold front come through. And that is, uh, that is not uh, chose to hung, hang around at all. Um, what have you learned about this team through three weeks of non-district play here? Uh, they're hungry. Uh, they're super coachable, um, very talented. Um, we've got a lot of young guys playing. Um, I think I counted it up. Uh, I think we've got eight sophomores that are playing significant minutes. Um, we have four freshmen that are playing significant minutes. One's playing on both sides of the ball. 
uh, Katie Jones, we talked about him before. Uh, so it's just a lot of youth, very, very talented, but not a whole lot of game experience. And so I'm seeing a lot of growth. Um, I'm seeing a lot of maturity. Um, one of the unique things that happened in those first three games was about, we, we talk about situational football all the time. We've had about every situation that you can, um, uh, that you can imagine. And you try to simulate those things in fall camp. Um, you know, one minute drill, four minute offense, four minute defense, two point conversions, onside kicks, receiving an onside kick. Uh, all those things in in the three games that we had non district, we've we've gotten to experience. So I think that's going to pay dividends. You know, that's uh, we talked a little bit about that uh, at the end of the game against Owasso. Yeah. You go for the two point conversion, didn't yeah. quite work out. But in a game like that, it's a non district game. That's a chance to get a rep in where you might have to do that same two point conversion exactly. in a district game or in a playoff game down the road. And and yeah, it's, it stinks to have lost that game, but it really doesn't hurt you in the long run. It, you know, you don't like to spin losses positively. Um, and I really don't play that game with the kids. I mean, we, we're very realistic about uh, what our expectations are. Um, but there's a lot of truth to that. I mean, you cannot simulate that kind of pressure, that kind of end of the game uh, environment. And uh, we were even talking as a coaching staff, you know, with our, our lights flickering on and off now after touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a new dynamic that we need to be prepared for as far as which coach is responsible for different things as far as communicating that we are going for a two-point conversion, what hash we want the ball on, getting the play called, make sure we got everybody out there, the right group out there. So there's a lot of dynamics, even us coaches, we're still learning. Um, as as you turn the page now into district play, what's kind of the vibe of this group? Are they is you know fresh after the bye week, excited? Yeah. Does it feel like extra weight because now the game's you know you you're playing for playoff contention at this point? I don't think it feels like weight. It, it uh, there's it, this group really is hungry, and I. I got to think that maybe it has something to do with uh, our season last year and, and that group seeing the improvement week in and week out. And and these guys truly believe that the, the goal is to be as hot and as uh, functioning at all levels uh, at the highest possible way um, running into the playoffs. And these guys believe in it. Um, you know, the process is a cliche term, but these guys believe in it. And so they're committed um, in every way they can prepare and every way that they can improve. They're doing those things. That's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship. We'll be back with more in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. Right now, get $200 from TTCU Federal Credit Union when you open a new checking account with direct deposit. What would you buy with $200? Cars, race cars, my own apartment, 100 coloring books, and a puppy. Or maybe some groceries and a tank of gas. $200 for whatever works for you from TTCU, because life is better in balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. I'm Adam Hildebrand, alongside Tiger Football head coach Josh Blankenship. Uh, it's it's a, been a little while now. It's been, what, 10-ish days since that game against yeah. Owasso. Uh, but that was a game in which Owasso got up early, uh, and then you guys were able to fight back and, and uh, close the gap to within a point at the end of that contest. What did you see out of your team over the course of that second half of play? Because it, it seemed like more things were starting to kind of click yep. and, and come into focus. Uh, special teams are improving. Uh, defense really, you know, with the exception of being in position on a few deep shots um, and just not making the play, they really played outstanding. Um, and then offense took a while to get in the rhythm, but once they did, um, was really pleased with the way they were playing. You know, you mentioned this team being hungry heading into district play, and it seems like you know, a couple of these games could have turned into more frustration. And I, I think that's a credit to the kids that they've utilized that to, you know, continue to stay focused and, and be hungry as opposed to just upset about, you know, the, the, the record. They're a mature group. I mean, we talk about the lack of experience in, in games, um, but maturity wise, character wise, it's a strong, strong group. Uh, we've got good leadership. Uh, I think our coaches do a good job of, of uh, staying on the points of, of ma maturing and growing and, and improving in all areas. And, and these kids are bought into that. Let's talk about a couple of guys that are going to join us here in just a minute. Uh, James Mejia and Briley Ferguson. For Jameson, uh, you know, he's got uh, – he's a senior on the offensive line, left tackle. Uh, the the center, starting center, is just a sophomore. So right. is, is Jameson kind of more the leader of that group, or how does that kind of play out dynamic-wise? Yeah, that, that left side, Chance Merrick and Jameson Mejia, uh, they're the experienced guys, the the vets of that group, and uh, they're definitely uh, the ones that, that lead that group. Um, Jameson's a fun story. You know, he, he – uh, 
moved to O-line, the bigger and bigger he got. So by the time we were here, uh, his junior season, uh, that's where we had him. And it was really about mid-season when you saw kind of the light go on for him uh, and really started to fall in love with that position and and things started to click for him. And then obviously in the offseason, his recruiting picked up and uh, that certainly can light a fire under you and make you want to continue to prepare and work and and uh, it's been fun to watch him mature and grow. So just to make sure that I'm understanding, he wasn't really playing much O-line before last year? I believe he was a tight end and okay. uh, basketball player. And, uh, you know, he started putting on weight in addition to the height that he has and the length that he has. And so by the time we got here, he was at O-line. Um, but uh, my understanding, yeah, basketball guy, tight end guy. Uh, he's got some some frame to continue to put on some weight no and, and continue to get bigger. So uh, it's, that'll be exciting to see him continue to develop over the course of this season. Um, as that left tackle, what first of all, what makes a good tackle on the offensive line? What what is those skill set and and what makes him successful being on that left side and and trying to lock that down? Uh, he's extremely athletic, which you don't always say that about offensive linemen, and that's not a knock on those guys. That's just a different skill set typically. So he's got that athleticism to go along with that size. Um, he's he's strong enough to be a force in the run game, and he is, um, but he's also got that ability to really get back and protect the quarterback on that backside of the QB, and um, he, he's hard to beat You know, with that length and that athleticism. That basketball background, does that help with footwork and that, no that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I think there's just some guys that uh, naturally have that and then guys that naturally have it and have developed it through, you know, basketball or other things. And, and he certainly got that. Uh, Briley Ferguson, he, he made a bunch of plays last year. What, what makes him such a threat on the edge? His toughness. Uh, he's relentless. Uh, he'll battle through anything. Uh, he's probably our, uh, for two years in a row, I'd say he's our, our hardest worker in the off season. I mean, he, he's an animal to watch in, in the off season and how much he gives and puts into it. And so because of that, the guys naturally want to follow his lead. Uh, same thing with the way he plays. He's just relentless and tough. Uh, I know he's battling an ankle and toe and fingers and wrists and all kinds of uh, dings and bruises and stuff that I know is bothering him, but you would never know it. He's got some size, but he's generally smaller than the guy who he's lining up across from. How does how does he combat that or, or use that maybe to his advantage even? Uh, I think he does use it to his advantage. You know, you go against guys that are bigger, um, and so he tries to use his quickness and use leverage, and then he's he's very coachable, and so he, he's, he takes techniques that he's taught and, and uses them uh, to his advantage. What are these guys like uh, off the football field, kind of outside the lines? Uh, you know, I don't follow them around uh, <laughs> off, off the field too much. That would much. probably be unhealthy. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably get in trouble for that, but they're uh, they're – they're kind of reserved guys. Jamison's a little bit more outgoing when he's comfortable. Uh, Briley, he's he's a closed book, man. He's a lumberjack, bearded up, <laughs> uh, hardworking, keeps to himself, at least around us coaches. But um, I'm kind of excited to have them on because I, I want to learn a little bit more about these guys. Uh, we'll have that coming up on the other side here in just a moment. This is Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crew. Recently, you've had to put your life on hold, and we're with you in this. At Ascension St. John, we are now open for appointments and we are fully prepared for your safety in our care. As we open our doors again, our doctors, nurses, and care teams will continue to wear personal protective equipment. We've taken even more steps to clean and stringently disinfect all areas. We will maintain distancing in our waiting rooms and will continue to limit visitors. And we will still screen all staff to protect their health and yours. Our emergency rooms are here 24-7. Please do not delay care. We're still delivering babies and performing surgeries. And we're open for your appointments, from specialists in surgical care to routine care and health screenings. Ask us about virtual visits. Ascension St. John continues to care for you, as we have been for almost a century. Thank you for trusting us. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib Crib. Of course, Adam Hildebrandt, Josh Blankenship with you, and uh, we're joined by a couple of players now. we got Jameson Mejia and Briley Ferguson here uh, to talk to us a little bit about uh, not only where they at, are, are at with their, their football playing, but also kind of where they at in general. So, Jam Jameson, let's start with you. First of all, what, what do you like about playing football? What, what has helped you fall in love with this game over time? Um, just, just improving constantly and just being able to see my improvement and how I can win more and more with each game. Were you always a lineman or did you like suddenly hit a growth spurt and somebody was like, Hey, maybe, uh, maybe you should block some. Yeah. I, I got, I was always tall. 
But then I hit a growth spurt, and then we had too many too many guys in one position, and they moved me over, and they said I could really shine there, so I stuck with it. You know, you're a guy who, uh, as you mentioned, is is pretty tall. You're going to be taller than a lot of the guys that you match up with. How do you utilize that length to your advantage? Um, a lot of kids want to get low on me, and it doesn't always work out for them because I am tall, and I can just sit on top of them. Makes it easy, I suppose, yeah. at that point. I did not. I was not blessed with that capability. So, uh, what what do you do away from football? Um, I like to hang out with friends, um, work out, work out with friends. It seems like it's all kind of in the same realm there. So that it makes it makes it easy to all kind of fall in line. Uh, what did you do for the bye weekend? Uh, prepared. We we had probably three or four padded practices. We we were going all in last week. And we got the opportunity to do a bye week or do a a team bonding exercise. And that was really cool because we actually get to have fun with everyone instead of being locked in on something we're focused on. Did you go catch a game too? Uh, which did you go to Oklahoma State? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. I thought I saw that. OSU game Twitter. too. That was a, that was a close game for five minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not even that. It was, yeah. it was like 21 zero within five minutes. It was crazy, but that's uh that's cool. You got to go out and, you know, experience some college football and, and, you know, take, take advantage of the off weekend a little bit. And hopefully you got rested up some too. Briley, let's, let's switch over to you. Uh, obviously you're on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, I want to ask you what's what's you you made plenty of plays. What what's your favorite play that you've either made or seen seen be made over the last couple of years here? Favorite play, probably the last one, the playoff game at Owasso when Makai Hanley uh, sacked the quarterback with fumble. All right, very, okay. So that leads right into another question I had for you. If you had to choose, strip sack or scoop and score? Got to go with the strip sack just because I'm D line. All right. So you don't you're not trying for the glory of, of crossing the goal line. You you want to be the guy that sets up sets them up and, and gets them in there. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Uh what is let's get off the football field for a minute. What's your favorite tailgate food? Tailgate. It's gonna have to be burgers. Burgers. You do you make do you make special burgers? You got like your own secret recipe at all? No, just normal burgers. <laughs> <laughs> y'all I'll tell you what, y'all are not uh, you're pretty straightforward. It's not like the Shrek onions thing like y'all are pretty pretty much about what you're about. Yep. Um do you have what what did you do on the on the bye week? Did you have a chance to to watch some college football or uh, I know you guys were probably still in on Sunday anyway cuz that's the start of your game week. So I rested up. I watched a little bit of the OU game. Got my pretty, body right. There you go. Uh, what's your okay, so Getting rested up, getting your body right. You gotta, you gotta eat right. You gotta hydrate. Do you have like a morning routine? You drink like raw eggs or any anything goofy like that? I do not. I usually try and start off with some water. Usually skip breakfast. Not really feeling it. I do. You eat breakfast. You you, you drink raw I eggs. Eat raw eggs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> it, like every day? Not every day. Like when I want to a pinch, raw eggs. You're a stronger man than I am. All right. <laughs> Jameson and Mejia and Briley Ferguson. Fellas, thanks for the time. Good luck this week. Thank you. Thank you. For families who like to build their wealth while staying liquid, we have flexible rate CDs to keep your funds working hard, even when you're not. First National Bank of Broken Arrow. The right balance. Welcome back to Inside Tiger Football, brought to you by Rib, Rib Crib. Again, a big thank you to Jameson Mejia and Briley Ferguson for joining us. I'm back with Coach Blankenship. Uh, Coach, you got uh, Southmore this weekend. You had a chance to go look at them uh, yep. during the bye week. What 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 are you expecting to see from the Sabercats on Thursday? Uh, I think they're going to throw everything they got at us. Um, you know, they've got some talented kids. They've got a defensive end uh, that really flashed uh, in that game I watched. Uh, I knew their tailback was, was good, um, so seeing him firsthand – um, you know, film's great, but but being able to see it with your own eyes uh, gives you a better idea. Um, my biggest concern is that we got to travel. Um, you know, we got a two-hour road trip. We've only done that once. That was at the beginning of the year. Um, tra- you know, you can't take it for granted. I mean, that's an added element, um, you know, before you're trying to get focused up for a game. Uh, so I'm more concerned about us, as usual. Um, but that, that travel aspect, playing on a Thursday night, uh, playing on the west side, um, the officiating is different over there. Just that's not a knock; it just is different. 
Um, so there's a lot of things we're going to have to be ready for, be ready to adjust to and, and respond. You got all that in addition to coming off of a bye week. So right. what, what are some signs that you're looking for early to, to figure out, okay, like the, these guys are locked in? A fast start. We haven't started fast yet. Um, we started fast on our offense against, uh, <clears throat> against Bentonville, um, but not the other phases of the game. Um, you know, we, we've started to click in all areas as we've gone through non-district, but seeing a fast start in all phases is what I'm looking for. That's Broken Arrow Tiger head football coach Josh Blankenship joining us for another edition of Inside Tiger Football brought to you by Rib Crib. We'll talk to you on AeroVision on Thursday as the Tigers take on South Moore. Thanks for joining us. I didn't, I didn't expect anyone to say yes, so I wasn't sure how to, how to segue out of that. All right, fellas, you're good. That's it. Thank you.